Hey there, y'all. Hey, Prophet David Taylor here. Hello to my Facebook audience and hello to my Periscope audience. God bless you. Uh, praising God for another wonderful Sunday. Praising God for some beautiful weather. I uh, had an anointed church service this morning and the Lord really spoke and the Lord have been crying. That's, that's tear stains on my collar. So I've been crying in worship. And uh, so I'm just praising God for Another day, another uh, another opportunity to come before you and release the prophetic word of God to you. So as always, you know, I pray before I come out and I ask the Lord what he wants me to say, what he wants me to give to the body of Christ, because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. It's about whatever the Lord is saying to the church. And just as an aside, that's what Revelation 2 and 3 are about in the Bible. If you've never read uh, the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3, those chapters are the Lord giving grades to the church. That's Jesus Christ in his position now, what the Lord looks like now, what he's doing now in heaven, giving grades to the church. And many times I don't think that's taught. That's the Lord speaking to us now from heaven. And the Lord's got something to say about the way we're living as Christians. The Lord's got something to say about the way we're completing our works or not. The Lord's got something to say about our fellowship with him, our walk with him, whether he's pleased with it or not. Okay? So God is talking to you right now today in 2018. It's not a far off. It's not out there somewhere in the future. It's not some long future date. The Bible is not some archaic book written by a bunch of old men uh, however many centuries ago and it's not relevant. That's not true. Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, he that was dead and is alive, the Alpha and the Omega, he that has the keys of hell and death, the one that is alive forevermore, is talking to you right now. Right now in May of 2018, the Lord got something to say. And in Revelation 2 and 3, you see how the Lord gives us grades, okay, in terms of how we're doing, okay? That's not the word for today. That's just an aside. I just want you to understand that any type of prophetic word or any type of prophetic teaching or any type of exegetic teaching from the Scripture if the Spirit of God anoints it, if the Spirit of God is in it, if the Spirit of God is leading, that's Jesus talking to you right now, today. Okay? So, the prophetic word that the Lord gave me today, the, the sentence was, the topic was, get in the will of God. Get in the will of God. Now, scripture reference for that is a very familiar passage, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Now, I'm going to read out of the Berean Study Bible, but I'll read a couple of other versions, too. So, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, on account of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Let me read that out of the King James. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's uh, verse 1. And verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? And the prophetic word today is to get in the will of God. Some of y'all listen to me. Some of y'all that are listening to this broadcast are not in the will of God. Okay? How do you know whether or not you're in the will of God? How do you know? Here's how you know. First and foremost, you ask him. You ask the Lord. You go before the Lord and you surrender. And you ask the Lord, am I in your will? Am I doing what you want me to do? Am I becoming who you want me to be? Am I going where you want me to go? Okay? And the Lord will tell you. He will tell you himself what he's pleased with, what he's not pleased with, what needs to change, what you need to keep doing, what you're doing right, what you need to repent of. But I'm sensing in my spirit as I minister that there are some of y'all out there that are in grave danger. This is what we do as prophets. This is what we do prophetically. We warn you if danger is coming, <clears throat> because the scripture says that surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first uh, tell his servants, the prophets. Okay, 
Uh, some of y'all listen to me right now. You're in danger. You need to get in the will of God. Whatever situation you're in that's not from God, you need to get out of it and get in the will of God. Whether that's with your diet, with your living situation, if you're in a relationship you shouldn't be in. Some of y'all might be living in the wrong city. Some of y'all might have the wrong job. Some of y'all might even be in the wrong ministry. That's one thing I've discovered many times. People can have an anointing or they can have a gift, but they don't always seek the Lord for the details. They don't always seek God for the details of their ministry and end up doing the wrong thing, end up preaching, and God didn't call them to preach. He called them to prophesy. End up teaching, and God didn't call them to teach. He called them to be an evangelist or a missionary. He called them to travel. Okay, end up doing a whole bunch of things that because they mistook their anointing and their gift. They thought it had to look a certain way. So you need to get out of whatever situation you're in that is not from God. Some of y'all listening to me right now, I can sense in the spirit, are in abusive relationships. Okay, God didn't put you on this earth for somebody to abuse you. Okay, God himself does not abuse us. That is a form of idolatry if you didn't know that. If you're bowing down before somebody that's abusing you, God himself does not abuse us. If God himself, the one with all power, the one that created us because we're just clay and breath, I tell God all the time, I'm just your animation. I'm an animated cartoon. I'm something you drew inside of my mother and blew the breath of life into me. That's the only reason I'm alive. But the one that created me does not abuse me. Okay? So if you are in a relationship with another human that is abusing you, that's a form of idolatry and definitely low self-esteem. You don't have to bow down before somebody that's abusing you, okay? But again, I feel very pressed in my spirit to warn some of y'all out there listening to me now that you need to get out of those abusive relationships and you need to get in the will of God. Because if you haven't heard me say it by now, the death horseman is in the land. The death horseman from the book of Revelation, when the seals are open, the death horseman is in the land. That's why there's so much death in America. That's why so many people are dying. Okay? So if you are out of the will of God, you need to get in it right now. So the question I ask, number one, is how do you know if, you, how do you know if you're in the will of God? Number one is you ask him. Okay? You go before the, go before the Lord and ask him, like in Revelation 2 and 3, to give you your grades. What am I doing right what am I doing wrong? What do I need to repent of? How do I need to grow? Am I pleasing in your sight or not? Okay? Uh, number two, the way you know is you can stack up all of your choices against Scripture. You can find a Scripture concerning whatever it is you're dealing with, and if your behavior doesn't line up with what God says, then you are out of His will. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. That's why we have the Scripture. So we know the mind of God, so we know his thoughts, so we know his will, so we know his commandments, so we know what he wants us to do. So you can always stack up your behavior against the scripture to find out if you're in the will of God. That's number two. Number three, how do I know if, I, if I'm in the will of God? Well, third way you know is you look at what it's producing. Whatever life you're living, what is it producing? Is it producing the fruit of the Spirit? Is it producing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, faith, and temperance? Is it producing works that glorify God, or is it producing the works of the flesh? Okay? Is it producing life in your life? How do you feel from day to day? Are you mentally sharp? Are you emotionally healthy? Are you physically, do you have a lot of energy? Are you healthy? Are you financially healthy? What is your physical health? What is the status of your relationships? Are you fruit-bearing? Are you healthy? Okay? Because it says in John 14 that herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Okay? So, once again, God wants us to be fruit-bearing. So, that's how you know if you're in the will of God. Number one, you ask Him, and you wait before the Lord and let Him give you your grades, like in Revelation 2 and 3. Number two, you stack your behavior against the Scriptures. That's why we have the Bible, so we can know the mind of God. And number three, you have to look at what it's producing. Now, I'm telling you, it's the easiest thing in the world to be deceived. That's why the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. 
He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. If you're sowing to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. And it's the easiest thing in the world to deceive yourself and say that you're not. When you first started smoking, don't nobody start smoking at 40. You first started smoking when you were 12. Because you thought it was the coolest thing ever, because you wanted to be rebellious, because all my friends are doing it, because you knew your parents wouldn't like it, and you thought it was the coolest thing ever. If you live to see 40 years, you are going to be so sorry you gave your body to them cigarettes. The amount of money you have spent on cigarettes alone, the, you might have emphysema, you might have lung cancer, you might have throat cancer, uh, your clothes smell, just so many different things happen after decades and decades of smoking. So if, just as an example of sowing to the flesh, so whatever it is that you're doing that you're sowing to the flesh, if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. So that's why the Lord wants us to sow to the Spirit so we can reap life everlasting. So that's the third way you know if you're in the will of God or not, or not, is what is your life producing? What kind of fruit is it producing? Okay? Because if it's not producing fruit unto life everlasting, if you don't have more life, abundant life in your life now, and you're not building up treasure in heaven unto life eternal, then you are out of the will of God. Okay? Now, one of the areas that I, I hit all the time and I feel the need to, to touch on it now is the area of marriage. How do you know if you're married to the right person? Okay? Same three things I just told you. You ask the Lord. You check the scripture. What is the relationship producing? The Lord says that we're supposed to be married to a bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh relationship. You're supposed to be married to someone that is, is custom designed by God to be with you. You're supposed to be with someone who was built by God specifically for the purpose of being married to you. Because not only do you have to be built for marriage, you also have to be anointed to be married and you have to be anointed to be married to that person. So if you're contemplating getting married, first thing you got to do is go before the Lord and ask the Lord, number one, should I get married? Do you want me to get married? And number two, is this person I'm interested in, is that the one you made for me? Because if they're not the bone of your bones, flesh of your flesh relationship, then you're never going to have the joy and success in marriage that you want. And if you have somebody that's all wrong for you, then your whole relationship is just going to be one big fight. Okay? And number two, you got to see how your relationship stacks up against the scriptures. Because the Bible warns us over and over and over and over again about getting involved with the wrong people. Cast not your pearls before swine, neither give that which is holding to the dogs, lest they trample them under the feet and turn again and rend you. Okay, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than when an angry and a contentious woman. It is better to dwell on the corner of a rooftop than when a brawling woman in a wide house. Uh, it tells women to uh, stay away from angry and furious men. With an angry and furious man, thou shalt not go. All kind of warnings in the Old Testament to the Hebrews about not getting involved with the Gentiles. Okay? So God warns us <clears throat> before we get married about, about getting with the right person. And, and then thirdly, look at what it's producing. Okay? What is that relationship producing in your life? Because the Lord would never send anybody in your life to take you away from Him. The Lord would never send you anybody in your life to make them, uh, make you a worse version of you. The Lord would never send anybody in your life that will produce anything other than what he wants. Okay? So, again, I just felt the, felt the need to touch on that because some of y'all are in the wrong relationships and it's not going to work out the way you want it to. You need to get in the will of God. Okay? So I'm going to release a prophetic word uh, that I have, and if there are any prayer requests, you can put it on the screen. Uh, then I'm going to do just a little bit more teaching on the scripture. For behold, my people, you are in a season of Isaac. You are in a time where your faith shall be rewarded and your faith shall become sight. You are in a season where the things you have been praying for and believing for and waiting for and sowing into are going to manifest and come into your hand. They will no longer be in the spiritual and invisible realm. They're going to be in your life right now. So behold, I release unto you the spirit of faith becoming sight. I release unto you the spirit of Isaac, the spirit of laughter, of finally getting that baby you've wanted for so long, of finally getting the thing that you prayed and fasted and believed for for so long into your life in a tangible, physical, literal way. And I release unto you the grace that you need to handle it once you get it. 
And when you get it, people shall see your laughter and they shall see your tears. Let every laughter, uh, every piece of laughter glorify me. Let every tear you shed glorify me. And when people ask you, why are you so happy? And why are you so filled with joy? Be sure to give me, give me, give me all the glory and say, the Lord hath delivered to me that which I have believed him for, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. So be sure when you get your Isaac in your hand, when it comes in your life, that you give God the glory. Okay? I'm going to do a little bit more teaching, and then we'll be done. When it says, do, my, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So the lowest level of God's will is good. And many times that's not taught. Many times that's why people fight God. Because you don't know that even the lowest level of God's will is still good. It's still better than the life you're living now. Because the lowest of God is still better than the highest of man. God can always do more for you than you can do for yourself. And whatever it is that God wants for you, it's better than what you got going now. The lowest level of his will is good. But then it says you can discern what is the good, <coughs> excuse me, and pleasing. In other words, you'll know when you're pleasing the Lord. You'll know how to please the Lord, and you'll know when you're pleasing the Lord. And then it says perfect will of God. What is a perfect will of God? What does that mean? That means you being on the path to knowing God intimately, to loving him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, number one. Number two, it means you being on the path to becoming all that you're supposed to become in this life. <coughs> Excuse me. And number three, it means you being on the path of doing everything you were born to do in this life. That's the perfect will of God. That number one, you would know him intimately and love him and know his love for you and love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Number two, that you would be on the path of becoming everything you're supposed to become. And number three, that you would do with your life what it is you're supposed to do. Because you were born for a reason or reasons. You were born for the purpose and purposes of God. And God wants you to spend your days on earth. Because we only have so many. We don't have forever to walk around in this clay body in this form. So God wants you to... Got something on my lip. God wants you to spend your days on earth doing what he has created you to do. Okay? So the Spirit of God has released unto you the unction to receive Isaac, to receive your faith but come inside, to get that thing you've been praying and believing for for a long time. So I'm excited about that in my life, and I'm excited about it in your life. But be sure when your blessings manifest and you're crying with joy and you're laughing for, for the joy that you're feeling for finally having what you've been believing for, be sure that you give God the glory and the credit. All right? Do we have any prayer requests? If we have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. If not, I'll get ready to close out with a word of prayer. Okay, I'm not seeing any prayer requests, so we'll go to our closing prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for being able to come into your presence by faith, O oh Lord. Thank you, for Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for being our Redeemer, our Savior the one that shed your own precious blood. You redeemed us with, our, with your own blood, O oh God. You paid the price in blood with your own life, O oh God, with, with torture and, and a brutal death and a shameful death and a horrific death. You did all that for us, for me, so that we could have abundant life, so that we can live again. So we thank you, O oh God, that we want to get in your will because you said you come that we might have life and have that more abundantly or in fullest measure. So we want to get in the will of God. Oh God, we want to live and we want to live the way you want us to live so we can have and do and be all the things you want us to have and do and be to glorify you, to glorify your name. So we thank you for it. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Great is the Father, great is the Son, great is the Holy Ghost, three in one. And we thank you for his anointing, his grace and his power because he is the one that empowers us to serve you and connects us with you. So we just give you the honor and the praise. We just bow down and humble ourselves and we give you the glory and thank you for letting us walk in your glory and experience your glory and, and how you daily load us with blessings. So we're going to go forth. We're going to give birth to Isaac. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to have fullness of joy and we're going to be careful to give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me today on uh, the Live Prophetic Word. Uh, I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time with the Live Prophetic Word. And I have a new program that I've started on the second Thursday night. So that means I will be on this Thursday. That is Thursday, May 10th. I'm going to be on at 7 p.m. First, I was on at 6, but I changed it to 7 to give uh, more people time to uh, get home, you know, uh, relax, uh, get a meal in or whatever. So we're going to start at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time this Thursday, May 10th. And I'm teaching on No More Genies. <clears throat> I'm teaching on No More Genies, okay? No More Genies. I'm teaching, teaching on No More Genie Concept, okay? So that's going to happen this Thursday, uh, May 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. Because Genie Concept is a terrible thing. Genie Concept has ruined a lot of people's lives. So I want to be sure that we dismantle it line by line and piece by piece and we replace it with truth. So join me this Thursday, May 10th at 7 p.m., uh, right here on Facebook Live or on Periscope for No More Genies. And then I'll be here next Sunday, uh, May 13th, at my regular time, at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed week. And remember, it's time to get in the will of God.